Hi everybody, welcome to Half Passed Out. It Cheers. is all of us together yeah. with some drinks. Uh, we're here to do the Christopher Ward watch review. Uh, we've had it in possession for what, Christian? Three weeks? Yeah, three weeks now. Good. It's been a minute. And we've got some thoughts to share on the watch. I am sporting it as of now. I've had the least amount of time with it. Say, so is this I'm your first time clothes. wearing it? No, this is the second time. Uh, <laughs> but I think Hunter had it the longest. You know, it's been on the wrist for about two weeks now. Sure. And uh, yeah, it's a beauty. It's a lot of fun to wear. First impressions, Hunter. Uh, I love the size okay. and the quality of just the build itself. Now this is a 38 millimeter, correct? Yeah, 38 millimeter, I think 42 lug to lug. Yep. Yeah, it's a pretty tight size. Yeah. That sounds about right. Don't quote us, look yeah. it up. Yeah. Do your research. Uh, <laughs> Do your own research. I believe it comes in at about a thousand dollars. Yeah, it's a relatively popular micro brand, at least in my world. I yeah. see it come up a lot. Christopher Ward's definitely picked up a lot of steam in the past few years, and they've got some really nice new drops coming out. Really like artsy pieces, and then the tenth anniversary of their COSC certified movement, the 12X, will release this year too. Yeah, uh, my initial review on the watch is the fit and finish of the watch itself. I think the finish, I've mentioned this in comparison on our podcast, the finish is noticeably less sharp in the way that the machining is a nice smooth rounded edge all the way around. It just feels a bit more concise and I appreciate that. I think some of the kind of cheaper watches can feel a little rough on the wrist initially because the machining just isn't as strong. Yeah. Um, but I, I think this finish is excellent. I'm a huge fan of the glossy bezel as well. I've yeah. mentioned that to Christian quite a lot. It's my, might be one of my favorite things on the watch. I think it gives that ceramic bezel look and feel without incurring the cost of a ceramic bezel. So those are the two that stood out for me at least. You wear it on the wrong hand. How does it feel on the right hand? Listen, wearing it on the right's great. Uh, the crown doesn't dig straight into my wrist when I do this. Fair. So not that it really would uh, on a left wrist, but I mm. enjoy being a lefty and <laughs> uh, it on the right wrist is great. One of us has to be wrong. Exactly. No, and both of you. <laughs> Uh, one of the biggest complaints I saw about online is the size of the buckle clasp. What do you guys think? How does it fit on the back of your wrist? I personally had no complaints about it. I thought it was pretty comfortable, especially with the micro adjustments. Let me tell you this. This is the exact opposite. I, I am wearing <laughs> the mission to Saturn, and this is the worst strap I've ever worn. That's a pretty common That's complaint as well. Yeah. If, if, if you take a look, we'll, we'll get B-roll of this. Uh, but just take a look at the size of this um, strap in comparison. It is crazy different, and this this <laughs> impedes no matter what. So I honestly had no complaints whatsoever for the Christopher Ward um, as, as it pertains to the buckle itself. Yeah, it's uh, I have no issue with it. I, I don't mind the buckle. I think my wrist is a little bit larger, but Christian and I have pretty similar sizes, yeah. and uh, it it fits very well. So, uh, I'm a fan, I, I really do. I think the size is underrated a bit. I think I've always uh, told myself I, I usually wear about a 41 millimeter watch. Mm -hmm. And so to get into a, a sporty 38 millimeter uh, has been really nice. It's, it's really yeah. nice piece. It's sized very much like the classic Rolex Explorer too. So it really is meant to be an everyday wearing watch. Yeah, it matches pretty much anything anyway. Yeah. Um, do you have any complaints about the watch? Any I don't. I'm not the biggest fan these days of display case backs. I don't think that they're the most necessary. Useful. Yeah. Yeah. They're not the most necessary, especially if your movement isn't like super high quality that like artistic orology craftsmanship. I mean, this is a Salida movement. It's a pretty well known. It's very reliable. It's going to work well. 
I don't think a display case back's necessary. It just kind of gets smudged and dirty. Save the cost there. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah, as I mentioned, it comes in at about a thousand dollars for the watch, and at that cost, I think the finish is noticeably strong enough to justify that. Yeah. The only thing I would say is, yeah, if you can save even a hundred bucks uh, off that. Exactly. At nine hundred dollars, this becomes even more enticing than it already is. Mm. I mean, I wore that every day for a week with three kids. Uh, yeah, I stood the test of time. Yeah, the three kids test it passed for sure. It's super. Watch is in great condition. I yeah, and it's still in excellent condition as I wear it now. No, we took it out on a hike. I think it got hit against a rock. Sorry, Christopher Ward. It's still good. It's still good. Yeah, that sapphire is really tough to dig out. It really is. Yeah, I can think uh, it's on. Yeah, hold this real quick. Oh my god. Yeah, it's a big beer, but. It's a 300 meter dive watch. I know Will doesn't go swimming with his dive watch, but I swim with this pretty frequently. It is so much thicker than the Christopher Ward. Probably, yeah. There you go. I don't know how I ended up like this. <sighs> Cause you got, you chose to sit in the middle. Yeah, it's, what did you guys say? Double the size? Yeah. Compared yeah, to, easy. now this is the Spinnaker Haas, mm -hmm. uh, which is their like flagship dive watch. Twice the size, super heavy. It's stainless steel versus, I believe this is, no, this is steel as well. This isn't the titanium. Yeah. We'd love to see the titanium for yeah. sure. <laughs> the easy, the ease to wear, I think, yeah. is what you're getting at. And it is very, very comfortable. Again, I mentioned the machining being a big part of that. The ease to wear just from how thick the watch is, it just feels nice all the way around. It feels like it, it's been very intentionally crafted. So I appreciate that. I think the micro adjustments are nice. Um, I think the maybe that's my one other complaint. So it's a little bit tougher to use in some other micro adjustments that I've yeah. used, mm -hmm. but not really a big deal. I didn't have to make any micro adjustments either. So all three of us reasonably pretty are similar. pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that I really appreciate about the watch um, is because it's an automatic movement, you are going to be um, winding that watch every once in a while if you don't work for a day or two. Um, and what I found is that when you pull out the crown and you expose the stem and start to wind it, it is the thickest stem I've seen yeah. on a watch. And maybe that's just because I haven't experienced a watch of this caliber <laughs> before, but in comparison to some of your more budget-friendly watches, you're you, have no, you have no worries yeah. about the Christopher Ward when you're winding it. Everyone talks about how, oh, you don't... You don't want to wind it when it's on your wrist, right? Because you don't you don't want to make sure that you're. Hour I think it's a pretty short power reserve. I think it's like 36. Yeah. So for the price point, it definitely could be better. But speaking as somebody who has broken a crown, uh, I'd like how durable it is. It's, yeah. It's super durable. No questions asked in terms of like there's no, there's there's no doubt yeah. that this thing is going to hold up. And 36 sounds about right. It was an everyday wear. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if you skip a day, you're probably gonna find yourself winding. Yeah. Do you guys think it could fit in a one watch collection? Like for somebody who's looking to buy just one watch, do you think it fits in that niche? Mm -hmm. Um, I think this one, at least for me in particular, it depends a little bit on wrist size. I think because this one's a little bit smaller than some of my other watches. I would say this can fit both the sporty and the dressy look. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you have a smaller wrist and this would kind of eat your wrist, I think you still may want something else for the dressy side of things. That's fair. Um, yeah. But that would be my only, like for me, I think this this could uh, feasibly do that because you could really wear this with anything, especially with the specific dial color. Yeah. The dial, it's just standard white dial, but the, I will say, I know it's a bit of a hot topic I mean, if you like the second hand or not, because that's the, kind of the most standout thing. Yeah, the orange the tip and the trident on Yeah, the, I, I like it. I'm yeah. a fan of that, that extra touch. Um, it's not too much, it's not over the top for me. That trident isn't annoying. I actually think it's pretty cool. <laughs> so um, I know some people have not enjoyed the second hand as yeah. far as reviews go, but I'm a big fan of it, so. See, I don't think I could do it as like one watch because like I would get antsy wearing that every day. It's a great everyday like wear watch, so it's what I would put on going to work, messing around with the kids. I would also probably have something dressier, get, I don't know, in that price point, you're also potentially looking at like a vintage Cartier tank or just some, or a Seiko Versage. Mm -hmm. And then I would go for something funky like the 
moon swatch is just a little bit different and out there. I think it makes it fits really well in a three watch collection. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I could wear that as my it's daily driver right every day. Yeah, um, but it does fit that that everyday role. Yeah. So uh, I, I really like it. I think it's again. To me, the finish is the most noticeable. I, I think I told you that right away. Mm -hmm. Told you that right away. That that's where you know I recently purchased the Zellos Black Tip, and where some of the edges just are a bit sharper and it, it sits a little rougher initially. You get used to it yeah. for sure. But this one, you put it on right away, and it feels like the machining was just done perfectly. Like they've totally I, that part. I appreciate it. It's something you just kind of have to wear and feel to know the difference, but. You can just tell that they put a lot of attention to detail, and uh, a lot of times, again, the lower end you go, I've spoken on numbers Casio before. <laughs> that's kind of the bottom of the barrel, to be fair. But like, even compared to the Seiko, um, <laughs> the bracelet can be yeah. a lot. Your your current uh, situation with that band, you know, you gotta get that swap out. That can be a big issue, and I, I think for me, it's very. But well, final thoughts, at $1,000, is it worth it? It's a cop for me. I think that just at $1,000, you're getting a lot of value as it pertains to all of the finishing that you're getting. Uh, you're, you have the white dial, so you're going to be able to match it with a lot of different uh, outfits and then also uh, applies at a lot of different events that you might be going out there uh, and doing. And then as it pertains to the one watch collection it kind of ticks enough boxes for me to say yeah, yeah it'll be worth a thousand dollars it's cool to have a watch from the uk no well yeah for me i would say i would i was going to touch on different dial colors i'm a big fan of different dial colors and, and types i would say it'd be a cop in a different color probably for me mm -hmm. i really like the watch i just want something a little more going on with the dial um, and I think that's the one thing. This is the standard dial. There are other dials for them out there. But noting that this is what the quality you get, and you, you can get other skews. Um, yeah. This, this is an excellent watch. So $1,000, I, I think it's a great watch. So it's a for me too. Hmm. Uh, I fully agree with Will. I think add a different color, or even with like the bronze case that they just released, I would absolutely pick it up. On a steel bracelet with the white dial, it's not necessarily my Per, my first choice, uh, but great finishing. If you're looking for an everyday watch, I mean, this definitely passed the three kids test. Uh, hi, I would test. highly, highly recommend this watch. Yeah. And for the value, you're getting something that I think punches up pretty well into the five or 10K oh, yeah. range. There's a reason why they're popping. Yeah. yeah, this is a well-known brand for a reason. Uh, I think it shows it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think it's a cop from all of us. Uh, yeah. Any other final st thoughts on it? That's all we have for now, I think. I think thanks for tuning in to Half Past Out. I'm sorry for yeah. the angle change in the camera. <laughs> camera swap, but it's all good. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks to our cameraman, Ryan. Hey. <laughs> uh, follow us on Instagram, listen to us on Spotify, and please consider supporting us on Patreon so we can buy Hunter new batteries for his camera. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. A big one. I'm struggling there. Yeah. This is That's hard to live. This is something. <laughs> I feel great. <sighs>